scary stories. For some context, this took place in June 2018, about two weeks before I turned 18. I'm female and had just finished my A-levels and decided to join Tinder for a joke just to have a bit of fun and waste time. I thought it would be fun to put my Snapchat in my bio just to see how many people added me and I admit I enjoy the attention from guys. People added me, but no one actually messaged me except one guy. I'll keep his name anonymous. This guy was 20, I was 17 at the time, and was about an hour drive away from me. This is important later. We started off just innocently chatting. The conversation was dry, but it killed boredom. So I held the conversation. One day, he randomly popped up asking me, So... When are we going to meet then? I was hesitant at first, but I agreed. In the end, after I ran it over, my parents. I invited him over to my house. I don't know what I was thinking, but I told him he could come over. He got there the next day at 9 a.m., bearing in mind he lived an hour away from me. First red flag. I was confused as hell and wasn't even dressed for the day. Nevertheless, I invited him in and finished getting ready. We just chilled and watched films all day before I headed off. Around 2 p.m., we chilled by the beach for a bit before coming back to the house at 5 p.m. I was expecting him to go home after that, but no, he stayed. We watched a couple more films, and every now and then, I would look over to him and catch him flat out staring at me. He would lock eyes and would say something creepy like, I love your eyes, or I'm so glad I have met you, all while knowing me for all of eight hours. I regret to say we ended up kissing. A lot I felt awkward in being a naive 17 year old on her first real date. I thought that was what you were supposed to do. He left at around 10 p.m. He was at my house for 13 hours, but there were no sparks at my end. I was only expecting this to be a one-time thing. Nope, he turned up at 9 a.m. again, like two days later. I went along with it because I had nothing better to do. Didn't leave again until 9 p.m. At this point, I had no interest in seeing him again and didn't really feel a romantic connection with him. I will admit, I may have led him on, as I never actually told him I wasn't interested. Looking back now, I should have told him, and maybe the next event wouldn't have happened. My birthday rolls around. Well, the day before, he shows up at 9 a.m. again and takes me out. We go to the mall, and he buys me so much. I keep saying, no, you don't have to, and let me buy this, but he insisted because it was my birthday. I had only met this guy twice before and known him all of five minutes, and he was buying me so much stuff like clothes, makeup, and, uh, sexy underwear. I was still only 17. Even though my birthday was the next day, I felt like I was being treated like a prostitute every time we walked around, he would force my hand into his and try and kiss me. I felt so awkward. Anyway, we would get back to my house around 6 p.m. I come home to flowers from him and that he had delivered to my house. We chill in my room. I didn't know what to do. I felt trapped. I felt like I couldn't tell him to leave because he had just spent so much money on me. Anyway, he tried to have sex with me, and he kept saying, Come on, didn't you have a nice birthday? And I came all this way for you. Just creepy stuff like that trying to get me to sleep with him. I just kissed him and told him I didn't want to. I wasn't a virgin, but I definitely didn't want to sleep with him. He finally leaves and just break down crying. I don't know why. I just felt so trapped. I tried 
be cold with him over message and stuff for the next few days hoping to scare him off. Nope. About three days after my birthday, I get home from work at 9 p.m. Guess whose car I see parked outside of my fucking house. Yep, I walk in and he's just sitting, chatting with my family in the lounge. They seem to really like him, even though I'd fucking told them how creepy he was. We ended up going to a local pub and getting drinks. We get back to my house and I'm pretty drunk. He ordered me spirits, pretty much, even when I hadn't even asked him to buy me a drink. So, I suggest more drinks and crack open a bottle of bubbly I saved from my birthday. As we are drinking more, he gets quieter. I look up at him and ask what's wrong and he suddenly grabs me, kisses me, and tries to put his hand up my skirt. I immediately push him off and stare angrily at him. He then looks at me with a really sinister look and says, I deserve it. Because he had alcohol, he couldn't drive me home, so he had to stay over. I tell him I'm too drunk and I just want to go to bed. Luckily, my mother happily showed him to the guest bedroom and I didn't see him again until the morning. I woke up around 9 a.m. and walked downstairs to find him cuddling my cat in the garden. I tell him I had a call from work saying that they need me in about an hour and that he needs to leave. He tried to protest saying that he'll wait till I'm finished and we can hang out but I tell him no and that I'm seeing a friend later which wasn't a lie but the work lie made him leave quicker and yet he still protests, saying we can all hang out together. Eventually, he takes no for an answer and leaves. I cry and cry and tell my mom everything. She still likes to tell me that he wasn't that bad to this day, but she didn't have to deal with him like I did. I meet my friend and tell her all about him, and that I'm going to leave in a couple of days and tell him I don't want to see him anymore. However, that same night I get a lengthy paragraph from this guy professing his undying love to me. Some of the most memorable quotes from this are, You were my whole world. I'd be nothing without you. And I'm so glad I have met you. I can't wait to share a life together. That was it. I had to be straight up with him. I told him everything that I didn't feel a connection to him and that what he did to me when he was drunk was not okay. I even offered to return the things he bought but he said no. Surprisingly, he actually apologized and said he was sorry for making me feel uncomfortable. Brilliant. Ugh, nope. He started stalking me. Anyway, who's got Snapchat? Well, no that you can view a map that tells you where all of your friends are. You can turn it off so people can't see you, but I customize mine so that only people I'm close with can see where I am. He was one of them. I forgot to turn it off, and whenever I went out, he was there about an hour later. Remember, he lives about an hour from me. I first noticed he had followed me after I went to the beach. Same one I went to with him, with my friend. About two or three hours into our day, we were getting ready to go home. I opened my snap maps just so that I could see that me and my friend were together and show her. When I saw who shall not be named with us, his little bitmoji character, probably like 200 yards away from us, seen just now, my eyes widen. I told my friend that the guy I had been complaining about all day was literally here, now with us somewhere. We both panicked and sped walked to my car and drove home. This happened two more times, once again with the same friend when we visited a reservoir near my town. 
There was no reason for him to be there, so I messaged him. I asked him what he was doing at the reservoir when I got home. He said he was taking pictures, but the reservoir would have been more like a three-hour road trip for him to drive, and he had never mentioned photography to me before, so I did not believe in him. It happened a third time, and that's when I blocked him. I was with my goddamn extended family in a restaurant, yet this time he messaged me his location on Snapchat, which is a little thing you can do. He was in the fucking building. I had to then come up with an excuse to tell all my extended family, who I haven't seen for months, why we had to leave. I told my mom the truth, and then she explained to them after. They were understanding. I'd had enough. I didn't even message him again. I blocked him on everything, and I didn't hear from him again. I met a guy, Braddy, on Tinder. He seemed really nice, funny. He was white British, Asian British mixed. It's relevant later. His family was quite well off and a little showy, which kind of turned me off. I was doing my master's when we met, and he was unemployed, living at home. He made comments that my master's was just in biology. I don't think he liked that I was doing well. He also did a lot of things that I hadn't that could be considered posh, like skiing, holidays, fencing, etc., and expressed some disappointment that I wasn't into that. I kind of blew it off. He never failed to mention how expensive his private school that he graduated from eight years prior was. Also, he was convinced that my closest friend, who he had never met, was racist because he was half white. She was British Asian. I was like, what on earth? You don't know her. She's never mentioned anything like that. Anyway, I'm not mixed, but due to my complexion, a lot of people think that I am, and I was often mistaken for part of his family. He kind of fetishized this. Again, it didn't seem like a big deal, so then I ignored it. Apart from all of this, it was going pretty well for about a year. He got a job in the military, so then we began to do long distance. I needed to find a job, and it wasn't looking good. I needed a visa to stay. This did put a lot of pressure on the relationship. Eventually, I did get a job. I went to visit him at his military base. Something told me, girl, you need to snoop. I did. He was on all of the dating sites and was calling me his ex, said things like I read a lot, am obsessed with animals, nerdy, and that I can't ski, apparently a deal breaker. All the things I thought he liked about me, but he did not. Left his ass, he tried to get me back, but kinda was like, well, you're an immigrant, which is why he cheated and left it. Fast forward 11 months, not a word from Brad. Although I've heard from the grapevine that he had a new girlfriend, it was hard for me getting over him. As I felt bitter that I had stayed in this country for him, but I'm dating someone new. Brad finds out, loses his damn mind. He rings me so much that my phone dies in an hour or two from all the vibrating threats interspersed with begging from me back in letters, phone calls, emails, even e-cards. I found out he's been reading all my mail, that he's got my home address and my work address. He sends gifts. He must have gotten his brother to bring back this crisp type I loved from South Africa. There was about 10 packets and one was open. In it, was a USB named Blackmail with nudes of me and a video that was of him crying for an hour and a half. Boxes of sweets sent a bundle of clothes including underwear. 
none of this was mine. He made A1 collages from puppy pictures and magazines, the kind of thing I made when I was eight. I've had about a hundred written letters or cards. He'd called the guy I was dating, and you can imagine what he said. She's a slag. She's not a virgin, etc. He contacts my mom saying the same thing. I think he'd like the idea that I was a conservative Asian. I'm an Asian, but we aren't a conservative family, and that I'd be disowned. Mom ignored him. He threatens to come to my house, sends a picture of train tickets to where I live. I'm now scared to stay at home, despite my four housemates and I are terrified. When his grandma died, I sent a sympathy card to his mom. This was like only a month into the stalking and I felt bad. At the time, I thought he would get over it. I did like his parents and his nana. He made out like I'd kill his nan because he said he was busy calling me instead of being with her when she passed. He said that he failed military school because of me and that he would contact my grad school and get me fired from my PhD. He sent the same threatening letters and pleading cards to my office. Many of them said how he'd get me deported. I was a nobody and he was a British citizen as if it was like a Nobel Prize and he had ruined my future. I was there legally. He was obsessed with the idea that I wouldn't get back with him because of his race and that I wanted a purebred because I liked golden retrievers. He said I was a racist and that it would come back to haunt me and I would have no future. None of this was true. I didn't want to be with him, but that was because he was a cheater. I thought he was a racist or weirdly obsessed with my race and he was harassing the life out of me. I had done nothing wrong, but I was still terrified. It was back in my parents' home country. This is the kind of thing that could get you fired. I went to London with my dad and family. My sister's boyfriend's sister put up a picture of us on Instagram. She wasn't private. Three minutes later, Brad had seen it and made a new account to message me saying I'm coming there. So now he's watching my sister's boyfriend's sister who wasn't close enough to have blocked him. She probably didn't know that this was even happening at the time. Every time I blocked a number or account, he got a new one. I didn't do anything for six months. I felt so guilty. I felt bad for his parents. Worried he would lose his job and was scared of him. I felt bad to worry my parents. This was their biggest fear. I'm 10,000 miles away and some crackhead is after me. Eventually I started bawling in front of everyone at work. When yet another letter arrived, I was too scared to go anywhere. I was terrified of unknown numbers. My supervisor marched me to the police. I told them everything and they said, you have three options. A, we do something about it now but in courts, it can take over a year and you'll probably have to see him. B, we call and give him an off the books warning or C, we don't do shit. I told them to let me think about it for two days. I'd tried before to call his parents before, but he always managed to intercept. I found out his dad had gotten a new job through LinkedIn after previously working from home. I called him at the office and told him everything. Well, his parents had thought that all this time we were still together and that I didn't like them anymore, hence why I hadn't come to see them. I said, if there's anything else, I will go back to the police. His dad apologized profusely and said, obviously, I don't want you to go to the police, but I understand and will do my best with Brad. I didn't hear from him for about a year, then sporadically heard emails from him asking for some personal details, probably under the guise 
that they were needed for his job. You have to disclose exes and he probably had to explain what happened since I did go to the police. I replied to some but not others. I have communicated probably about three times over the last four years. Very brief, bare minimum. If the military really did need those details, they could call me themselves. Fast forward. It's now four years later, and I'm on holiday with my current partner at my mom's place in my mom's home country. Christmas Day arrives, and there's a beautiful painting of my sister and I from my favorite photo of us, delivered by DHL to my mom's address. It's amazing, and arrived on Christmas Day. We aren't big on gifts, so naturally, now the whole family is arguing about who did the painting and why they didn't admit it. The next day, we're driving to the beach and I say, I hope it wasn't crazy ass Brad who sent that painting and everyone's like, no, don't be silly. It must have been dad and he forgot he's done it. Well, 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 joke's on me. A week later, a fucking Facebook message from my mother asking if we got his gift. So crazy, Brad. I hope we never hear from you again. Let's not meet ever again.